friends, it's decision-making time here on the old British Gibson. The bridge plate is in. It turned out nice. I'll be perfectly honest with you. The uh, There's still a little bit of an arch to this. It didn't flatten it out as much as I was hoping it would flatten it out. So there's still a rocker thing going on there. Hopefully when we put the bridge on it, we can take some more of that out. Um, at least I don't think it's going to ever get any worse and we can set the neck to that and I think it'll be fine I just was hoping I could get more of that bend out of there it's pretty hard to do and you know I know a lot of people just think they can do that but yeah show me that's what I want to see it's easy to talk about but it's hard to do those you know those internal braces and everything are have spent 50 years bending themselves into that shape and they don't want to go back. So anyway, that's one issue. So we've got that done pretty much on the bridge plate. But now we have to make decisions. How do we want to proceed? Should I just make a new bridge and stick it on here? I mean, I could put the old bridge on here, I guess, but I don't really like this old bridge. It's been cut down. It's kind of thinned down and and I really want to make one that's just slightly, slightly bigger to cover up some of the scarring around where this one came off. So I need to make a new bridge. But the thing is, can, should I just make a new bridge, put it on there, and then set the neck to that? Or should I put the neck on it and then, you know, make the, you know, and set the neck to this and then put the bridge on later? Well, it, and it's more complicated than that. There's all kinds of decisions you have to make. It's the order of operations. For me, I like to get the bridge on them first if the fingerboard is, is on here. Well, the fingerboard is still on this neck. But then there's another decision. Does this fingerboard stay on here or do we replace this fingerboard? So, you know, you can't even make one decision without making three or four. And so you got to know where you're headed before you, you know, get to your destination. That's for darn sure with this stuff. And the order of operations can be very important. Otherwise, you just make a lot more work for yourself. Okay, so what's the issue with the fretboard? Well, the fretboard itself, and we'll bring it in here close, you can see is very dished out. There's no binding on this particular fretboard. But you can see the finish goes right up to there. You know, it's finished. And, you know, if you take this off, you're breaking all that and chipping all that. And it doesn't look great. On this side, it's got dots, you know. And, of course, it's got those deep holes. Now, a lot of people at this point would say, just put a new fretboard on there. You're wasting your time. Just put a new fretboard on there. Well, those people, in my opinion, have never done this. Because, you know... Think about all the work. Does this fretboard look like this? Not at all. I mean, this is just a big fretboard. It's got the slots cut in it. There's no frets in it. There's no dots in it. There's no side dots in it. You know, it doesn't fit the shape of the neck, etc., etc., etc. So just putting a new fretboard on it doesn't save you much time until you, you know, you got to make it look like this fretboard. It's got to fit this guitar. So there's a ton of work in that, putting a new fretboard on. More work than fixing this one, I guarantee you. I flat guarantee you. Now, granted, it's not easy to fix this one. And the, the bottom line is, is this one salvageable? That's the question that you have to ask. Well, I look at it, and i got to be perfectly honest. It's just on the edge of being salvageable. If it wasn't already off of the guitar and everything, and if we hadn't done this much work, I would say for sure, let's just salvage it. But the fact that we've done this much work gives me pause and makes me want to look at this and go, should we change it or not? So here's the way I'm going to make that decision. I'm going to take a single edge razor blade and try to clean this up and see how much of it cleans up and how much is going to be left. Let's just do that real quick and then we'll know whether or not it's worth salvaging this fretboard. Got a new razor blade here and I'm going to go into this fret because there's no dot in it. It's, it's some of the deeper ones. These two here are pretty deep though. But I like this one because there's no dot there to have to scrape over. And I'm just going to scrape this one and see how much comes out of here. 
and how bad it looks after we get it out of here. It's cleaning up pretty good, but it's going to take some extra effort, especially up here right up against the frets. The moral of this story on this thing, and let me just tell you, is cut your fingernails. That's what causes these grooves. Believe it or not, it's your fingernails. Um, it's not the strings. A lot of people think it's the strings, but if you look real careful here, you'll see that the string groove, and let me just prove that to you here, you'll see that the string groove that's in the fret is in between the, the dished out places. So the string groove is down here, the dished out place is above it. The string groove is down here, the dished out place is above it. And that's from your fingernail hitting that above the string. So it's absolutely caused by fingernails. So the easy way to fix this is cut your fingernails. Since we're going this deep, I'd kind of like to fix this thing right. But on the other hand, it may be nostalgia in the fact that he wants to keep this fingerboard. I don't know. I don't think we discussed the fingerboard itself. I know he wants it all the problems fixed and he wants it playable. But we never really got into the fingerboard itself, I don't think, as far as a discussion. Though I have so many discussions, I can't keep it all straight. Well, you can see there, just that little bit of work has made it look like that. So those really deep ones, you know, they, they could come out. I could get them out. I think I'll contact the customer and see what he wants to do. I think that's the best decision at this point. I literally am on the fence. I, you know, if I, it was, if I wasn't on the fence, I probably wouldn't contact the customer. But because I'm on the fence about it, if it was a little bit worse, then absolutely we have to replace the fretboard. A little bit better, and then no, we wouldn't replace it. It's just really right in the middle there. It really is. So let's just see which way the customer feels about it, and we'll go with that. I sent the customer a note about the fretboard, so I'm waiting on his response on that before I proceed. I have a feeling he's going to lean towards a new one, and I don't know. I'm a little bit leaning that way myself, but it's hard to say. While I'm waiting on that response, there's some work that needs to be done here. There was some damage done getting this off. Not that much, but some damage. And of course it could have been that way already. This gap appeared to open up right here. I don't know if it's just the binding or if there's something loose in there. The top here is definitely loose from the block. So the top is, I don't know if you can see the top, you probably can see it moving there. Yeah. So that's loose, and there, there's a brace inside here that's loose. So we need to look at all that, get glue everywhere, get this all clamped back down. And at the same time, I want to look at this and see if there's something wrong here, too. Yeah, yep, I can see now. The uh, block is definitely loose from the top here, and I can push that in. So... I need to look that all over really good inside and see what's up there. I've got the mirror down in here and I think you can see it's pointed back up to the top here and through here there's a long, there's a wide, fairly wide brace that goes across here and fairly thin, it's fairly flat. That brace is loose from the top. There's another taller brace and skinnier brace that goes through here, and that one's also loose from the top. In the picture, in the mirror, that's this flat brace across here. I think you can see there's a flat brace, and then there's a taller brace that I'm not sure you can see in the picture very well. But there's this, it's just like this tall brace down in here, except that it's up in here. And that's loose too. So all of that's loose. This neck block is loose. And uh, the neck block, what's weird about this is it feels like it's pushing out from the top a little bit. So, you know, we got to get in there and clean all of that off as much as we can, get glue in all those cracks and surfaces, and then get this all clamped back together. So that's where we're headed. I've been able to get the 
knife in underneath most of the bracing. Not so much under that flat one because it's impossible to get above it. Um, I don't know how I'm going to get glue in there either other than to just wedge it up right here and hopefully not crack it and just get glue down in there. It's not an easy thing to get glue on. I'm going to go ahead and start mocking up my clamping systems for this because it's all got to be clamped at one time. Thought I might as well point out while I'm looking at this that there's two shims, well actually maybe more than that, but for sure two shims. There's a shim on each side of this uh, slot. As a matter of fact, it looks like this shim might even be bent and go all the way around. I, maybe not. It may just end down here. Now, I think it does end. But, but anyway, there's a shim on both sides. I, those shims are not in real tight. That could be because of the moisture I used to get it up, the neck out. But I'm just cutting those shims out, just getting rid of them because they are of no value to me. Uh, I don't like that method. I would prefer to put the shims on this part of the neck. And maybe they were, but I don't think so, the way, way everything looks. I think they were put on this side. I like to put them on the neck itself. Um, then you can carve them back down to the neck, and you're really never losing any wood by doing it that way. Of course, I guess you could do the same thing this way, but it's I think it's just much harder to work with this because you, you have to work down in this hole. So I'm just going to clean all this up, get it as clean and, and as I can get it. And I'm going to do that before I even glue all this up and clamp it all up because I just want to make sure everything's clean and uh, fitting good. I don't know if those shims were put in from the factory or if this has been done once before on this guitar. I don't really know for sure. Hopefully, when we're done here, it'll be the last time this is done. I'm going to cut everything down to bare wood, and we'll start back. For those of you who like such things out there, and I know there's quite a few of you, this number here appears to say 528. It looks like it says 528. It could be 328, but I think it's 528. I've looked at it under magnifier, and that's what it looks like, 528. That's what I'm going with. There's another number in here. I can't really make this one out very good. But you can probably see it just about as clearly as I can, if not better. It looks to me like 477 something maybe a 2 it could be 4722 even 4728 maybe the first two I'm pretty sure are 47 the next one could be a 7 it could be a 2 2 then the fourth one that I can see looks like it's <clears throat> another two if I was guessing but that's just pure guessing to be honest because it's just almost impossible to tell just thought you might like to know those numbers so we definitely have our work cut out for us in this area it is not a simple fix but it's not it's not that terribly difficult and it should be perfectly strong once we get it all reinforced with, you know, and clamped down and glued up tight. I think it'll be just fine. I've got it really cleaned up now. I got all the glue out of there that I can get out. I've scraped it even to, to even get rid of the extra glue. I was noticing that I wasn't seeing ingrain on the one side, so I figured, well, there must still be a shim, and sure enough, there was another shim that I had to get off, so I got like three shims out of it. Then, you know, I uh, then I already told you I found this crack along here, and that crack extends across the bottom right down through here and comes out in front and makes this makes this little piece of side, the side here stick out. I'm trying to line that back up and it doesn't want to go together. I can't get in that crack to clean it out, or at least I can't right now. I'm sure trying, but I can't find anything that'll go in there and clean it out. I really don't know 
what I'm going to do about this. I'm just trying to find ways to get in there and, and get rid of whatever's blocking it from going back together. It's, it moves a little bit, but only a very little bit. I wish I could get down in that crack and clean that crack out real good. It's not an easy fix. I really don't know what I can get in there to clean that out. If I, it, it would have to be something very stiff, very long, and very, very skinny. The thickness of this blade. And cut those fibers and maybe even old glue or whatever's in there and just knock it out of the way, then maybe this crack will go back together better. There we went. There it's through. It's through on the inside. It's a pretty straight crack. And it goes pretty much all the way up and down. If I can clean it out, I think we can get her glued back together. It's moving though. It's moving now where I couldn't even get the crack to move before. So that's that's a good thing. We're well, I just opened it up quite a bit right there. That ought to do it. Now I'm gonna get the high pressure air and blow that crack out real good. And I think that maybe will and it's opened up enough now I can get glue down in there all the way now. Hopefully we can get whatever's in there out of the way to let this crack close all the way up. Maybe you can see how I've got a, how I've got that crack wedged open in there. We're gonna get the air compressor and really blow that out good while I got it open. Well, friends, I think that's as good as that can be done. I don't think you can do much more than what I've done there. Like I said, I I was able to get this feeler gauge through there and clean it out pretty good. I got the air blown in there and got it all cleaned out. The only place I can't really get into is this crack that goes at an angle through right through the heel here. And I'm just hoping that that's cleared out. I mean, I got the air in there and hopefully that's, if there's anything in there, it blew it out. So right now, I think all I'm gonna try to clamp, I was gonna do all this at once, but I think this is a separate glue up. So I'm just gonna get glue in this block and just glue the block back to itself. I was worried that I wouldn't get good penetration, but now that I've got this crack opened up like I've got it opened up, I don't think penetration is going to be an issue. I think it's going to go all the way through now. And of course, I always use a paintbrush and get in there and push it in further. You can see that most of the glue now has disappeared because I've really got it down in the crack pretty far. Wouldn't hurt to squirt a little bit of air into that angle right there, especially to get the glue down in there a little bit better. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Yeah, that works, I think. You can't get too much glue in a place like this. Uh, lots of places you can. You can get too much glue, but something like this, you, you get all the glue you can in there and you worry about your squeeze out later. There you go. Look at the squeeze out coming out of that. And it looks like it's matching up here on the front too. So that's good. I think we whipped that puppy real well. I'm real happy with that. So now we'll get some blocks and clamp this all up. Some of you guys got a kick out of me saying I made it cry. Well, I made this one cry too because it just weeped all over the place here. There's, there is glue coming out of everywhere. What I did was, because this clamp wouldn't reach back to the neck block, I put several other blocks in there, and I have, uh, I have two blocks in there, one about an inch and a half, another one about a three quarter, to build it out so that this clamp could sit on that. Then I put another block across here to the full length and just horsed it right down. And man, I mean the glue just came out and it looked like it lined up perfectly. So 
I don't think it could be done any better. I'm gonna look inside there to see how much of a mess I have on the inside. Hopefully not too much, but we may have to get in there and clean that out. Yeah, a lot more glue in there than I would have expected. That's amazing. I guess from when I blew the air in there, it blew it around a little bit. A little bit more than I was expecting. Um, looks real good, actually. Looks real good. I'm real happy with the way that turned out. So, okay, so I'm going to get a damp rag and reach around in there and clean that out. The guitar's been sitting for a few hours. This has been, you know, all clamped up and that's tight now. It, it lined up good. It's all good and square. Everything feels solid now. I really am happy we did it that way. Now we got to get glue in all of these places here and, and then this binding and get everything sucked back together. So here we go. It's, uh, this won't be real easy. Hopefully not crazy hard, but not real easy. I'm going to get out my angled brushes because I have a feeling I'm going to be needing them. I think this one's probably the one I'll be using the most to try to get up in here and get the glue up underneath the braces and stuff. I think I can pour glue. I can see how I can get it down in there pretty good. Pretty much hit the crack on that one. Now I'll just paint it in under there. That's the tall brace. Getting it in on this flat brace, not quite so simple. That br brace is behind the tall one, so you can't really get to it. I'm afraid I'm going to crack it and break it across here is what I'm afraid of. I just want to get it just as high as I can get it without cracking it and breaking it, and then squeeze the glue through that crack. Now I'll flip it around and hopefully try to get it lifted up this other way. I, although I don't think it's going to lift the other way as easy. The other way it's not as loose. I think I got the glue in there pretty good. Now I'm going to get it back on the top of this block here, the neck block. Well, that's probably about as good as it's going to get. I'm going to pump it in there a little bit. I think it's going to be fine. And we'll get our clamps and clamp it up and see what happens. You can see I've got the top clamp to the block uh, with this big clamp. I've got that flat brace through here clamp with this clamp and a block on the inside. And then I've got the tall brace clamp with this little clamp right here. And that's about as good as I can do really. It's just an awkward thing. Now the binding needs to be glued and clamped and I'm going to go ahead and glue the binding right now with the canopy glue and then I'm going to tape that tight. And now I've got the tape on the binding so I think that knocks that out. I think we're in real real good shape there now. Just got to give that a few hours to set up and then we can start working on the neck joint. Got a really nice piece of hardwood here, rosewood. Very nice, heavy, just sounds like metal. Very good piece of wood. So I'm going, it's quarter sawed and everything, so I'm going to add about, oh, a sixteenth of an inch on this straight edge and on this end, like that, just to make it a little bigger. And I'm going to then trace it with a Sharpie on the other two edges. And I'll leave the Sharpie line. And then that will be the size of the new bridge. That'll make a really, really nice bridge. So I'll cut that out on the bandsaw and leave the lines. Thin it down in my thickness sander to the proper thickness, which will be a little thicker than this. This is presently, let's see here, about 284 thousandths. I'll probably go down to about 
325, something like that. This is pretty thick right now. This is 468. So we'll knock it down to around 325,000, something like that. I've got the duplicate bridge made, and hopefully you can see that it's just a little bit bigger. Not very much at all. I tried to make mine a little more symmetrical. This one's not that terribly symmetrical. There's, if you measure it in different places, you get different measurements all over the place. Um, I could round off this front edge. This, this is actually the front edge on this type of bridge. On a Martin bridge, this would be the back. But on, on a Gibson bridge like this, this is actually the front. So I'm gonna round this off to kind of match this. Well, I hope you think the one I made looks much nicer. It's a little lighter color, but we can always make it darker. That's not a problem. But you can see it's nice and smooth. The holes are drilled real nice. They look good. The only thing that's not done now is the slot cut in it, and we won't do that until we set the intonation on the guitar itself. And then we'll get the slot exactly where it should be. And I think that's gonna really do a nice job. I've got the new bridge in place, and now I'm gonna scratch around it with a brand new X-Acto blade knife here. It should put a nice fine line. It's much harder to hold this and not let it move than you might think. Very hard to do. It wants to move from the moment you set it down till the time you're done. So you really have to take your time with this. So now we just need to clean this all off to those cut lines. Well, we've got the bridge all made. We've got the spot cleaned off to put the bridge back. It's uh, all bare, down to bare wood. This has been drying now. All these clamps have been drying for about an hour and a half. So we're just about ready to put this back on there. I'm gonna tooth it up a little bit. And in addition on this, because it's rosewood and an exotic wood, I'm going to take acetone and wipe this down and I'll show you all the resin that comes off of this. It's just a good idea and then that way the glue sticks just that much better. But I'm toothing it up first so that when I wipe it down with the acetone we can really get the stuff off of there. That feels good. It's got a nice feel to it now. It's not slick like glass. I think you can see I've got a clean rag here. I'm gonna put a little acetone on this and wipe it down. And you can just see immediately how much dark stuff comes off of there. It's, it's worth doing, it really is. Okay, I don't think it can get much better than that. Okay, it only takes that acetone a few seconds to flash off and dry off. It actually feels really slick again, so I'm gonna tooth it just a little bit more because I don't want it to feel slick. Very lightly though. Like I said, these have been on there an hour and a half or so. There's no real stress on these joints. Uh, everything went back together very easy, so I think we're fine to take the, the clamps off of these. Uh, even, even if there was stress, I think we'd be fine after an hour and a half. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and take them off of there to get them out of my way. I'm just going to take this little piece of sandpaper and pour a That's 100 grit. Taking that toothing blade and cutting across it to mostly just make sure I got all the glue off. It also levels it really good. Okay, might as well get after it. Trying to just make sure I got it on there good and straight and everything. It looks pretty darn good to me. I'm going to go ahead and use a call under there. This one brace is pretty tall. 
problem with trying to use a call under there is getting it in there and getting it to stay while you get your hand in there. Just tighten it down a little bit. Try to get in there with the mirror and see if the call is in the right place, which I would say is chances are slim to zero. But we'll look. Yeah, it looks all right. That side actually. So I think it's close enough. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. Tighten it right down in the center first to put pressure on those outer edges. Now I'll put pressure on the outer edges a little bit. I don't, although I don't really like to put the pressure with these things because I don't want to bow it down. I just touch them down good and snug. I think I'll clean up the squeeze out before I put those other clamps on. Be a little easier. That looks pretty darn good. Getting some more good squeeze out there. The top looks pretty flat, but it's not perfectly flat. I'll just be honest with you. It's, uh, it's still got a little bit of a bow in it. But we'll set the neck to that, and I don't think it'll get any, any worse because of the way we've done this. I don't think that bow can, can, can get any worse. It's, uh, it's pretty much run its course, I believe. Well, there you go. We're all set up. Hopefully, we'll put that neck back on it tomorrow and get this thing on its way. Thought I had the camera on and I didn't, but as you just saw, I believe, I just drilled the holes through here. I got all the clamps off this. Everything feels absolutely rock solid on this top. And I mean absolutely just rock solid. I think the top is good now, the neck is good. Um, gonna last another 50 years, no problem. Um, even though we didn't get all of the hump out of here, we reduced the hump a little bit. This seam is still a little bit open, most of it, but keep in mind, it's all glued with uh, that patch in here and up to here. So it's real solid up to about here, but then this crack is a little bit open, so we're going to fill that later, uh, probably with glue, actually. The only other thing I've noticed is that this front brace right here that you can probably see with my, put my finger on it right there is uh, a little bit loose. It's only loose right in the very center and I don't think I can get glue under it without breaking it all the way out of there. So I may glue that with CA glue and put it back. Some of these cleats that are on the back seam, this back seam here, some of those cleats are loose on the ends and we'll see about getting those back down tight too. As a matter of fact, one of the cleats is completely missing back here. That may have fallen out in transit here. I think I may have that in a box. Yeah, actually I do have that in a box of parts here so I can put that cleat back in. And then we're gonna fit this neck up and hopefully get the neck on it yet today. I've got the 2P10 here and that's gonna be the best way to get the this brace glued back in here, I'm sure, because it, it just penetrates so well. I'm going to hold that, hold pressure on that till that has a chance to set up good. CA glue is not my favorite glue to use, but on the other hand, sometimes it's the right glue to use just because you create so much less crap, if you will, because. Um, you know, if, if I was to try to get glue under that, I would have had to break that brace all the way out of there to get glue under there. The CA glue just penetrates right through. So that's, and it's a good strong glue that'll stick to just about anything. But the, the negative of it is, is that it runs. And you can see it, unfortunately, a little bit. Just trying to see what my attack is gonna be on these little cleats that are out of there you know it's way back here and so how do you get back in there and get this flat and get it clamped down flat and to be honest it's really hard to do it's not easy 
you almost have to use posts between the top and the back and then they have to be the exact right length and even just lining it up is really hard you, you can't see so when you look in there it does it's not lined up and it just takes it takes a while just to get it the way you want it but because it's uh, completely out of there I'm going to use wood glue rather than CA glue in this case because the wood glue is more forgiving I'll be able to get in there and move it around where the CA glue you can glue your hand in there and get the thing glued in the wrong place accidentally real easy in a case like this the wood glue is far superior in my opinion I've got this little block of hardwood this is Osage Orange by the way and it's very hard and I can lay that over the top of this it's almost the same size just a hair short it'd be nice if it was just that hair a bit longer but it should work good enough to uh, use as the block to push down on this to keep it flat put a fairly liberal amount of glue on this piece because I'm not putting it on the other side and this will give it the best chance of holding well and now we'll put this on top of there and then I'll try to find some little sticks that I can wedge up in there to push down on that and there's a, a brace in the top that just wants to be in exactly in the wrong place for this but I think I got it maybe now the question is did it move no it looks good that's holding it down I'm just gonna let that set there and do its thing for 30 minutes or so and then I'll start working on this neck I'm, I don't want to do it until that's had a chance to set up a little bit I'm afraid I'll bob move it around although I may go ahead and just glue these ends of these cleats that I can see that are sticking up they don't look like they're going to be easy fixes either because they look like they're stuck in the position they're in and they're up they look like they've been attempted to be glued back already and they got glued in the up position so I don't think I'm going to get them down just looking for something long enough to push this down to see if it's going to go down I don't think so like I said I think they're glued in the up position yep they are that one is anyway that one might be too we might have a chance with this one yeah this one's loose the rest of those are glued already once again I think the CA glue is the way to go with this it's not my favorite but I think it's the right way to go I'm going to use the medium CA glue because I'm going to let it run down under the end of this now I'll hold it in place and I'll sp spritz it with the accelerator to keep it down it was in a place where you couldn't get glue under there very good because of other braces in the way so I think we did the best we think we could there feels good and solid now this little piece came out of there also and it's all the way at the tail block back here <laughs> so you know getting your hand up in there and getting this glued back in is not simple uh, and we've already got that other one in the way so I can't really do it right now I will try to do that one later I've got the guitar sitting over there drying with that one little cleat that I'm pressed into place while that's drying I'm going to clean up this dovetail on the neck because we're getting ready to put this dovetail back in place overall it's in pretty good shape there's a lot of junk on it here that we just want to get rid of so that we can when we put it back in place we can do a really good job I want to get down to bare wood and we're gonna to have to put some shims on it or I know that for sure first of all because we took shims out of the other part of the neck and secondly because I've already test fitted it and I can tell it's pretty sloppy fit it's pretty loose really we've got it back to the factory here and I would say the factory 
didn't do the best job cutting a good tight groove there. I'm scraping off any remnants of the old glue. That's what I'm doing. Is I really don't want any kind of glue in there when I start to glue this back and glue the cleats in it. I really want it to be wood to wood. The glue just holds so much better that way. Well, I got her cleaned off pretty good. If you can see it here, there's a break right there going across that way and it comes across the face of it this way right there you can see it probably so I want to open that up get glue in there and clamp that back down before I do anything else if you use that bottle right see how it forced it all the way through the crack and it's on the inside in here you can see it squeezing out if you use that bottle right that that bottle can be your friend in terms of you know a lot of people say you got to use a, a syringe or something and I try to avoid using syringes I mean they work good but they're messy and you got to clean them up and just they're just more hassle than they're worth if you don't have to use them if you need to use them then they're the tool that's for sure but overall you can get by without a syringe most of the time if you just think it through It'll work better if I put a wedge on here to take to keep it more square. There you go. That's what I was trying to get. See how it just really squeezed it tight right there. That that should hold it. Now there's a chance I may glue that little wedge in there, but if I do, I can either knock it out or cut it out. One of the two. I'm not too worried about that. I'm looking at the end of this to see if I see any more breaks or cracks and that's a drill mark there for where we drilled down through into the hole so that's not not a problem I think it's good and solid otherwise so we'll let that set up a little while while this was sitting up a little bit I went and made some shim stock out of some more mahogany and I cut it where it'd be just about the right size rather than having to cut it way down and this fits fine. There's nothing wrong with this fit. It, you know, I don't know why I do these things because you don't really need to. But if I angle this just a little bit, it'll even fit a little bit better up against that neck. And it'll, I, I mostly am concerned about how tight it fits. Um, you know, it probably wouldn't make any difference at all. It, but on the other hand, this will make it fit a little bit tighter into that joint because it's not a 90 degree angle. And so we'll call that side ready and now we'll do this other side and it would just need this side beveled off. Yeah, you probably don't have to do this, but putting glue on both sides of this just guarantees that it's going to make good contact and really hold well. And on something like this, I don't want nothing to give. I really want it to hold well. Now the trick of this is, once again, it's clamping it more than anything. It's If you use these wedges... Typically, they'll work pretty well to hold it together. That'll probably work. And then, as usual, I always try to get one more clamp on there. So see if we can get a regular clamp across the middle here. Not sure why that was so hard to clamp. Obviously the angles make it difficult, but I wasn't getting, you know, it squeezed out everywhere and that's what I settled on. Seems to be working pretty good now. So got two spring clamps here that are really putting a lot of pressure on it and then I've got it clamped at the top up here. So 
we'll have to let that set an hour or so and then maybe it'll stay where it's at. I'm going to attempt to clean up this spot right here on this guitar. It's, I've already actually cleaned it up a little bit off camera. It was way worse than this, but you can see it's real dull in this area. This is where the arm has been laying and it even was wrinkled up a little bit. It's a little less wrinkly now, but I'm just gonna show you how I'm cleaning that up. I'm just taking plain old water on a little towel like this, just a touch of dish soap, just a touch, and I'm just rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. And I'll show you what, you know, that towel was fairly clean. Now look at that, how dirty it is. So that looks like it's gotten most of it. Now the problem with doing that very long is that it will kind of milk the finish up a little bit. But you know I'm drying it back off here real quick and uh, I think once we buff it out it'll look just fine. And that got rid of about 90% of that. There's a little bit of something right here yet. But I think you can see that it, it actually did get rid of most of that. Now I think once we buff it, it'll get rid of the rest of it. I'm going to try to clean up this little spot right here. There's a little bit more. I think that'll do it. Again, you don't want to do it too long because you'll milk up your finish, especially on these old cracked up finishes. That looks real good now. I mean, comparatively, it's almost day and night different. I think we can show you again. I think I can show it to you again on this neck on this neck see how dull this neck is right here and how bad it is right here too I think you can see that put the light in a different place it's real dull right in here there I think you can see it pretty clearly how dull that is let's try the same technique got the damp cloth here turn it to a clean section right here and I'll put just a touch, and I mean just a little dot of soap. And that's just like dishwashing soap. And then we'll just rub it and rub it and get rid of all that grime. That's, as my buddy Randy would call it, it's just DNA is all that is. And we just rub it and rub it and rub it. Now, if you know your finish is uh, shellac, then you definitely don't want to do this because shellac will milk up very quickly. Other finishes will milk up, but just not nearly as fast. So you want to, uh, you do it for a little while and then you want to dry it off just as good as you can dry it off. I got rid of about 90% of it, I think. I think you can see there it looks much, much, much better. It could stand that again. And uh, I'll probably go ahead and do a little bit more. Here's a pretty big spot right here. Through a recommendation of a viewer, I bought, a, bought this product for filling chips and holes and things like that in instruments and uh, it's it's for the finish it's it fills up the finish you know i tried it on a practice piece first a few days ago and it seemed to work okay so i applied it to this biggest chip right here on this guitar you can see there's a lot of little chips out of in this area and i don't know what caused that but somebody's pecked on it with something i it, you know it's all the way across here actually so anyway, the biggest chip I filled with this, and it didn't quite fill it flush. Vote's still out on it yet. It's a little early to tell, but I'm going to try to fill, since it looks like pretty good there, I'm going to go ahead and fill the rest of it. I already scraped this smooth, by the way, and it just needs more. It says that the drying time varies. It says don't shake the bottle. 
as it gets air in it. This little tip lets you pinpoint where you put it, which is kind of nice. It doesn't flow, it's pretty thick. I don't know, my vote's out on it right now. I think it may have uses. I'm not sure this is the best use for it yet, but it looks better than all them big holes in there. And hopefully it'll blend in good enough. Here's a pretty big dent right here, a little different kind of a dent, so try it on this one too. I think that's all I'm gonna do for right now, and we'll let that set for a while and see what that does. Through a viewer recommendation, I tried this glossy accents on these chip outs. These, it looks just like somebody took a, well, I don't know, not exactly an ice pick, but almost like a little pointed hammer and just kind of chipped around here. I mean, there's a bunch of chips. And I filled, oh, 75% of them in with this glossy accents. And it's been sitting for a couple of weeks. So it's had plenty of time to dry. I'm gonna take a single edge razor blade and try to scrape off the high spots. And I may have to tape the razor blade off a little bit with uh, some cellophane tape. It's looking fine, but I think by the time I do all these, it'd probably be better if I just tape it. So I put cellophane tape on both sides of the razor blade, left about a quarter inch gap in the middle. And that'll make it easier for getting out here on these small ones and getting them flat. That one was a really big one. Yeah, that one there, the whole thing popped out. The glossy accents didn't stick. And I'm not sure about that one. It might have done the same thing there. The one thing I don't like is that it didn't, it didn't blend with the finish whatsoever in terms of trying to get rid of the scarring. It, uh, I think if I'd have just put plain old lacquer in there, it would have looked better. Plain old lacquer would have taken a million applications. This only took one application, but it doesn't look like it really did much to me. I'm not real happy with it so far. I could see how it could be useful just to fill a, a chip out of the finish if it didn't hit the wood, but this actually, I think, hit the wood and the wood discolored a little bit. And so this, I don't think the glossy accents was the best choice right here. Might try it again on something else. And, and it, here it is, even after all that time, it's gumming up and pulling completely out of the hole after all that time. Yeah, I'm not impressed at all with it now. Because I was going over that big one and the big one just gummed up and rolled out. Uh, no, it's not for me. You can see here how it's just chipped. It just kind of gummed up and rolled out of the hole there. There was a big hole there. Yeah, that's not very good. So I'm not real happy with that. I gave it a shot, and things like that usually just get one chance with me, and that one failed its chance. I don't like that at all. It's just gumming up and pulling out. Kind of came out of all these little spaces. It didn't really stick very well. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, it's completely out of there now. That just knocked it all the way, the rest of the way out. Yeah. Oh well. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I don't feel like it really hurt anything because nothing's, there's just nothing left, it's gone. So that's kind of what it looked like before I did anything. It's just really bad. This failed in my opinion. It just failed. Not, not a good idea. What am I going to do about this? I don't know if I'm going to do anything more. I may just sand it off, buff it out, and leave that like it is, because I think we're running into the edge of the budget on this guitar at this point. We may have already passed up the budget to some degree even. So I think I'm just going to sand it down, buff it out, and call it good, because that wasn't really my charge to fix that anyway.